there are a number of different ways of quantifying the concentration and types of particles in a solution. And so we'll just go through those one by one. We'll start with arguably the most important, molarity. The molarity of something is the number of moles of some solute that you have per liter of solution overall. And this is whenever you see square brackets that describe concentrations, that's the molarity that's being described there. Molality is somewhat similar, but it uses a different scale, and it's useful a lot of the times because it can be produced in a lab using different measurements. And so a lot of times when you're working in a lab, you may not want to measure out a liter of solution, but rather you're looking at how many kilograms of solvent you have. And so molality, which tends to be depicted as a more cursive looking M, is the moles of your solute over the number of kilograms of solvent. And remember that this one is the liters of solution, whereas this one is the kilograms of solvent. I think that there's a really simple mnemonic that you can use. I just think of two people named Orion and Alvin. So AR for, for molarity and ION for solution. So A-R-I-O-N, Orion, whereas molality is A-L and solvent, and so Alvin, A-L-V-E-N. So Orion and Alvin can tell you what the denominator quantity is. For molarity, it's liters of solution. For molality, it's the kilograms of solvent. A mole fraction is a way of measuring what is the comparative number of moles of one material relative to all of the material within a solution or within some sort of mixture. It's calculated by simply looking at the number of moles of that material over the total number of moles. It doesn't consider mass or anything like that. It purely considers the number of moles and it's depicted with a capital X and usually some subscript depicting what mole fraction we're looking at. So it could be mole fraction of sodium or mole fraction of water or something like that. It's simply a ratio of the number of moles of this material over the number of total moles and mole fraction will range from zero to one, where one is a completely concentrated thing that is only that material. Then we move on to the mass-based measurements. Mass percentage is fairly straightforward. It is the percent by mass of a material. So you look at the mass of your solute divided by the total mass, and you multiply that by 100%. A lot of times you'll see this in kilograms, but you'll also see this in grams and other units. As long as the units are the same for the two masses, then it's simple to calculate a mass percentage. The next one can sometimes be confusing, parts per million. Parts per million sounds like how many particles do you have per million particles, but that's not what it is. Parts per million is actually a mass-based measurement, and it's the per one million units of mass, one million grams, one million kilograms, how many of those units of mass are of a particular particle. So you can find parts per million by looking at mass percentage and multiplying that by 10 to the fourth. The reason that you do that is because you've already multiplied by 100, which is 10 to the second, in order to find mass percentage. So multiplying by an additional 10 to the fourth is a way to get from this mass to mass relationship to something that is expressed in millions. The other way is you can simply look at the mass of your solute divided by the total mass and just multiply it by 10 to the 6. But remember that parts per million is a mass measurement and not a measurement of particles. Particles is a mole fraction or perhaps one of these. Parts per million is a mass measurement, and that's very, very important to create that distinction. And lastly, we have normality. And normality is a measurement of the acidity or basicity of something, not on the pH scale, but rather in terms of how many acid or base equivalents there are. And an acid equivalent is the amount of acid that could give up a certain number of protons. Oftentimes it's measured as the amount that can yield a mole of protons. That doesn't mean that it has to give up those protons. A lot of weak acids won't fully dissociate, but if they have one mole of potential protons that they can give up, 
then that would be one normality. Base equivalents are the number of protons that they can react with. And so a base equivalent would be something that could theoretically interact with one mole of protons. There's a simple way of figuring out normality based on molarity. Because they have the same units, notice that we're looking at the volume of the solution in liters, much like we're looking at the liters of solution down here. So they have the same denominator, and they essentially have the same numerator, except for this one is just moles of solute particles. This one in particular is moles of acid equivalents, moles of potential protons that they can give up. And so if you have, let's say, a one molar solution of HCl, then you have a one normal solution of that because each HCl only gives up one proton, so its normality will be equal to its molarity. If you have a one molar solution of H2SO4, that's a diprotic acid, which means that it has two protons that it can give up. And so you would multiply it by two in order to go from molarity to normality. So if you have one, mole, one molar solution of H2SO4, that has a normality of two, because it can yield two moles of H plus particles. One other thing to be aware of, just to really drive this point home, is that it doesn't matter if it's a strong or a weak acid. If it's a weaker acid, like an alcohol or something like that, its normality is still based on the number of protons that it could contribute, not that you would expect it to spontaneously when you put it into solution. So if you have a one molar solution of some alcohol, it still has a normality of one because it can donate that number of protons. So a lot of times molarity and normality will be the same because it's only something that donates one proton or if it's a base it's something that only reacts with one proton. But in other cases with diprotic acids or with base particles that uh, let's say CaOH2 where it yields two hydroxide groups then you'll have to double the molarity to get to normality. And normality is something that you might see tested with titrations and other physical chemistry measurements. These are the major different ways of quantifying liquid solutions. And each of these has relevant points. And you should be able to figure out what the difference is between all of these different measurements.